My name is Hugh Murray, uh, Classic Drinks Wine Specialist is who we are. And today it gives me great pleasure to introduce Oppie Sadler. Oppie Sadler is the Chief Winemaker in La Mascota in Mendoza in Argentina. And they say you never should meet your heroes, but today I'm getting the pleasure of meeting one of my all-time heroes in the wine business. And I want to prove that whole theory wrong. You should always meet your hero. Today we also have Barbara Smirkin, who's the export director for the wines of La Mascota, and she is kindly going to interpret our conversation with Oppie today. Oppie, you're very welcome. Barbara, you're very Thank welcome. You. Can we start very comfortably and say, why are you called Oppie? Because that's not your name, is it? <laughs> eh, bueno, a ver, este, eh, mi nombre es Rodolfo. Eh, Oppie es un, un, un nickname eh, familiar. Eh, mi, mi casa, mi hermana. His real name is Rodolfo. Es, as you know, it's Rodolfo Sadler. But eh, Oppie is a nickname that his sister used to ha eh, have for him. And that is due because of his grandfather, who was German origin. And in German, Opa, Opa means a grandfather. So Opa is like a little grandfather. And his grandfather called him like that because when he was a baby, he looked like a small grandfather. He looks like it now. <laughs> <laughs> and you have nearly 30 years experience as a winemaker. At what stage in your life, when you were a young man, did you decide you wanted to be a winemaker? Eh, a ver, eh, la enología ha sido parte it wasn't a sudden decision, but it's, it can be justified because his grandfather he was, um, was a viticulture and his father was a winemaker and viticulture and they both got a winery. So he grew up in, in that environment. He grew up uh, watching his father and his grandfather working on the vineyards and working on the cellar. So it was like a transition that he, he, he was all seeing his family going through that. So that's why he made the, the final decision. And as a winemaker, what excites you most about the job? Y el momento De, de más, este, de, de más diversión. So he thinks that the most exciting time is when when he is just in the middle of, of a harvest of, of, of a, a vintage. So all the winemakers are working to, to try to convert grapes into wine in the most beautiful way. And also uh, the, the other exciting time is when they make the blends because he thinks that that's the moment when he became he, he becomes an artist and, and like an artisan of, of the wines so that's the other exciting time brilliant and i'm glad you said that because one of my theories in wine is meet the winemaker talk to them get inside their head and you actually know what's going to be inside the bottle yeah. and i have this theory that literally you can have an, a winemaker as a with a white canvas painting their mm -hmm. thoughts yes and I, I every time we because we deal with a lot of wine companies around the world and every time i meet the winemaker and we chat and we taste the wines it's exactly like the personality so do you consider yourself an artist creo que toda persona que hace que hace algo y, y, y le da su okay, so he thinks that a definition of an artist is a person who puts his his intention and he, his personality in something, creating anything. So once he, he does little things to create a final product, he thinks that is being an artist, to put everything, the intention, the love and the personality in it. Because you don't call your wines wines, you call them creations. Mm -hmm. Why do you do that? Bueno, eso, eso nace, este, Desde el momento cuando nosotros creamos eh, la mascota. So, more than creation, he called uh, creatures his wine. And that, yeah, and that is because um, he's just uh, told me the story about mascota. When, when they created mascota, all the wines come from the vineyard called la mascota. The vineyard is called like that. So, when they have to put something on the label, they thought about a mascota, which translates to a mascot or a pet in Argentina, in, in Spanish. So they decided to put, to decide that each wine will be like a pet, 
and and the pet that was chosen was the bat. And because you can see the bat on the labels the bats here, on all the and labels. I know it's quite challenging on the the black, but it's actually on that. So that's your pet, the black, the bat. Mm -hmm. The bat. And Excellent. The, that is the, the the reason for this is that when he grew up in his grandfather cellar, on the cellar, all really old cellar, rustic cellars, used to be bats hanging on the roof. Sometimes. So he grew up watching the bats, and he always thought that the bats were like the guardians uh, of, of, the, the wine. of the wines and of the, they, they were taking care of them while they were harvesting. Can you tell me a little bit about La, La Mascota, the winery? La, la bodega, a ver, nosotros empezamos a comenzar, comenzamos a, a trabajar con los vinos de... The winery started in 2002, so they started making the wines in um, Maipo cellar, uh, um, cellar from Maipo, which is a wine region in Mendoza. So they started uh, preparing different wines from different and small parcels, just to experiment in and, and getting to know the region and the wines and the grapes. So that's wh where they started. And they just became bigger and bigger and bigger because uh, the people loved the, style. the but wines. But the, the one thing I noticed about your wines, you're, you focus predominantly on reds. Is that a personal choice or do you feel Mendoza is better suited for reds. Mendoza, Mendoza, bueno, tenemos, eh, eh, hacemos vinos blancos. Eh, no estamos en, en Mendoza, no es la zona. Okay, so he thinks that, that para, yes, Mendoza, it is a region that delivers el, a lot el, in, el in red wine. Uh, he thinks Toronto that in Argentina, Toronto is more, uh, pero uh, nosotros, you can say the best eh, in Argentina can be delivered eh, through eh, Toronto. Eh, but in Mendoza, eh, eh, you can Mendoza. find better Malbec, Cabernet, Cabernet Franc. And he always liked to focus on that and show you, he, his idea is also show you that Mendoza is not only Malbec. He loves to, to show you that you have the Cabernet Franc, which is amazing, and the Cabernet Sauvignon, which is also amazing. So not only focusing on the typical reds, but he has, for example, the Chardonnay, which is also one of his favorite varietals but uh, showing that there are other things than Malbec. But it's interesting, like very few people realize that Argentina has been producing wine for the last couple of centuries. Everyone has a perception that they are only producing wine for the last 20, 30, 40 years. And even back in the early 80s in London, you would not have come across too many Argentinian wines. So relatively speaking, from this side of the world, Argentina is a very young country, as far mm -hmm. as we're concerned. And it's become very famous for Malbec. And it's great to hear you, but there's more to it than Malbec. And you want people to recognize Argentina as more than Malbec. And it's great that you're talking about Cabernet Sauvignon and Cabernet Franc. Do you have a favorite grape <laughs> to work with? <laughs> oh, okay. Malbec para, para lo que es. Okay, so for a winemaker in Argentina, it can, you can say that it's easier to, pro, uh, to produce Malbec yeah. because it's a varietal that is, is common in Argentina in the sense that everybody likes to, to produce Malbec because it's, you know that Malbec from Argentina is great and it's amazing. But for winemakers, it's more challenging to produce other things than uh, Malbec and, for example, producing Cabernet Sauvignon at the same quality and the same characteristic on the same level that the amazing Cabernet Sauvignon there are in other places in the world. So for, for him, it's more challenging to produce a Cabernet Sauvignon, which is... Well, I think it leads on to the fact that most of the great winemakers I've had the pleasure of meeting are very modest, and Oppie would be one of those people. Oppie's here in Europe at the moment because earlier on in the year in Paris, his Cabernet Sauvignon 2016 was voted best red wine in the world, which is quite an achievement. And unfortunately, we don't have any here today because of the demand. It's actually sold out. We're hoping to have a certain amount of stock coming into us very shortly. And I know when it lands, it uh, will already be sold out. So can we taste a wine today with you? I think we should. And I have a couple of preferences. We're not going to taste all of them because we'll be here all day. But and I know you're busy. You have to fly away to, to another country in Europe. Can we taste the Grand Mascota because it's your top level Malbec? Would that be okay? So what would you normally drink at home? Generally, generally, when, a ver, 
durante la semana no son eh, comidas tan complicadas. So, for every day when you have meals that are not so complicated, it's everyday meal. Uh, he prefers opi because for not so complicated and complex meal, he will prefer a simple wine and elegant wine. So, opi will be with him, next to him, all week. And on weekends, when you have people coming to your house and your family and your friends coming in, and you have more complex meals, wines. you need a complex wine, you need a, a wine that represents Opie more. So he, he always said that uh, Unanime has given him so much joy and success uh, all around the world that he, all his friends are coming to the house and ask for, for Unanime because it's like his personality in, in one wine. Can you give us a little description of Grand Muscota Pop? What made it so good, oak aging? What makes it that little bit of special? Gran Mascota is a wine that is mature in the case of Malbec 14 months in Barrica. Acá usamos barrica únicamente francesa. Mm -hmm. uh, Gran Mascot is a wine that has been through oak, French oak for 14 months. So it's a wine that comes from the Yuko Valley because they started producing wines from Maipu, but year after year they tried to do something new. They started looking for other grapes from other origins and Uko Valley is now delivering amazing grapes and amazing wines from the grapes. So Grand Mascot is a wine that comes from Uko and delivers a fruit that is so intense and so with a long stay that it's good that it has a balance between the oak and the fruit. He doesn't like the, the wines that are too oaky, so he thinks that for a perfect wine, it has to be a balance. So the fruit that delivers the, the grapes that come from the vineyard are shown still in the wine. But from opening it, and we've just literally opened it now, mm -hmm. there's an elegance to it. And even though the temperature could come up and we could decant mm -hmm. this wine, for a wine that's instantly open, it's just got incredible and mm -hmm. Absolutely superb, well done, well done indeed. Um, what's your feelings about screw cap and cork? Do you feel you're going to go more screw cap or do you think it's very important to have cork for the more expensive wines? Or? Sí, sí, sí. Um, eh, nosotros elegimos el screw cap en este, en este tipo de, de gama de vino porque tenemos que, tenemos que resguardar la, la fruta que tiene. He thinks that for, for wines like Opie, for example, that are wines of, of, of the year, fresh wines, where fruity is like the main character of the wine, mm -hmm. uh, he wants to keep that fruit untouched. So he will prefer screw cap to avoid, the, the he needs a perfect closure and uh, avoid the, the exchanging of the, uh, the oxygen with the wine so the fruit is still intact. So you want this nearly to be pure and clean. Yeah. This yes. is about fruit. It's yeah. not about other developing characteristics mm -hmm. it takes on. Exactly. Where you feel by an oak, it makes a difference. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or in cork, it does make a difference. One thing we didn't touch on, and we're going to open another wine if you don't mind, but every year your wines win awards. Tim Atkins, you know, Wine Spectator, Decanter, every year consistently wines win an award, which says an awful lot about the quality of your wine, so congratulations. But what difference has it made since your Cabernet Sauvignon was voted the best red in the world? What difference has it made? Decíamos recién que para nosotros los enólogos es fácil mostrar un. As we said previously, for a winemaker in Argentina, it is a challenge to do amazing Cabernet Sauvignons, and even more when everybody worldwide knows Argentina and directly links it to Malbec. So as it is so challenging to produce a good Cabernet, Fra uh, Cabernet Sauvignon that is equal to, to uh, Cabernet Sauvignon from France or from California, which you know that they, they are amazing wines. So for him, it makes him really proud to know that La Mascota gets a bad red wine of the world with a Cabernet Sauvignon. That's why I love this man. Straight away I asked him what it meant to him and he talked all about the wine, it wasn't about him. And that's what makes a great winemaker. They don't think it's just about themselves personally. It's about what they're doing in the soil, and it's what they're doing in the vineyard, so congratulations. But 
Is your wife still talking to you or does she think you've got too big a head now because you're a superstar in Argentina? <laughs> Si tu esposa te sigue hablando, dice que te sos un muy famoso, una figura muy famosa. <laughs> we had the pleasure last night, we had a dinner for clients, and uh, it was a fantastic success. And you were kind enough to bring over three bottles just for the event. And we tasted it, and it's easy to see why it won Best Red Wine, because as a 2016 Cabernet Sauvignon, you would expect something bang, powerful, chunky, and something you'd nearly want to go and brush your teeth with, but there was a pure elegance to it which was just divine so really congratulations thank you I mean, you deserve it so can we taste this little baby and can you tell us a little bit about it perfect que nos digas algo de luna niño vamos a probarlo a ver a ver recién hablábamos de de este de del artista y esto vamos a tomar el ejemplo de okay so we talked recently about the the winemaker being an artist uh, he's just comparing the winemaking with a painting. So for a painter, for example, if, if a painter has only one color to paint, he'll prepare an amazing, an amazing painting. Yeah. But it's not the same as having two, three, four more colors. So he thinks that having that variation, but if you took it and you put it on the, in the varietals, the grape varietals, you have more tools to, to create an amazing painting, an amazing wine. And in this case, it has Cabernet Sauvignon Malbec and Cabernet Franc. And, and the Cabernets always have a long, long stay and, and persistence. And the Malbec in the middle just give them the roundness in the wine. So that makes a perfect balance and creates a perfect picture. Places like Argentina and Chile who produce outstanding wines at this level is in Ireland at the moment we have this issue where people think if they want to spend money they have to go back to Europe and to France and Italy and of course they're making absolutely superb wines but for the same money that they want to spend over here if they spend it here they get a wine of four times the quality mm -hmm. that's outstanding wine that doesn't mm -hmm. happen and even at the dinner last night we were tasting about six wines and this is the wine that just blew everyone apart you could see the reactions on their face, they all step back and go, my goodness. And again, we're talking a relatively young wine. What vintage are we on? 2014. And again, so it's a baby. And we're getting this lovely, smooth softness. It's like that pair of jeans that you want to wear that's <laughs> it's always forgiving. What does the name mean? ¿Qué significa un anime? Un anime surgió en, en un comienzo porque este, cuando decidimos el blend que tenía que, que, que llevar este, este, este vino, este, fue una decisión entre, entre el enólogo. So y unanime el en este, en español significa unánime. And es, when es, they es, started es, thinking es, about it, the project, para, he just sit with the, the viticulture and they need to decide which varietals they will put on this new blend, this new project. And for unanime decision, they both agreed that the best that the vintage and the vineyards can deliver was the three varietals that they use. So the decision was unanimous. The project was Very called good. unanimous on the final one. So, so for an Argentinian wine, you wouldn't expect to use another varietals than Malbec. Mm -hmm. So using another varietals was a challenge and it was a unanimous decision and also a good decision because it's a, one of the most selling wines and exported wines in Argentina at the moment. So it was 100% a good decision. Congratulations. I know you're caught for time because you have a flight, but if I can ask you a couple more questions, technically speaking, I could speak to you all night. But who are your mentors? Who are the people who really inspire you as a winemaker? <laughs> and, they, and they don't necessarily have to be in the wine business because I'm putting you down as an artist and you're creating all the time. And sometimes we can get our creativity from something completely different to our business. So, who inspires you? Cuando uno, a, a ver, este, desde desde chico, este, mi padre tuvo viñedo. Okay, so the first the first person that he can think about is his father, because he grew up with his father being on the vineyards, and his father it was a viticulture, so he loved planting different varietals. He, 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 and at that time in Argentina, you wouldn't say that there were varietal wines. You have all the red grapes were called French grapes and you have to mix them and, and create the perfect wines. So he will always be with his father 
preparing uh, different blends. Mm -hmm. So uh, doing every year different things is similar to what he used to do with his grandfather. So he thinks that is where it comes from. Okay, so your father is really your inspiration. <laughs> Excellent. And has Oppie got a secret talent that no one knows about? Me gusta, me gusta a ver como Kobe, como Kobe especial, me gusta andar en moto. Este eh, nosotros So, you wouldn't call it like a talent, but it is a hobby for him to to ride motorbikes. Excellent. And he would love to ride a motorbike to, to just take a couple of his wines and take it and and cross the the Andes mountains with the motorbike to wow. Chile to try some seafood because it, Chile is good for, for seafood, you know, and we are really far, we are close, but we are just with a, a mountain in the middle. So he'll, he will love to go with a lot of friends, uh, ride the motorbike and go and cross the, the mountains have with his wine. What do you drive? What do you drive? What motorbike? ¿Cuál es tu moto? Una, se, mar, se puede decir marca. <laughs> se puede, if you can call a brand. Is a brand? Eh, una BMW. Una BMW. 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 Oh, very good. Excellent. <laughs> and last question. Tell us something, tell our audience something about yourself that they don't know. Algo que no sepan de mí. One thing that he, he thinks that it can be interesting, and it is interesting for him, is that he comes from a viticulturist and winemaking family. Yeah. And he would expect that his daughter and son would do the same, but actually, no. Uh, his son is a doctor. Oh, fantastic. His daughter <laughs> is studying to be a dentist. So the winemaker path just ends here. You scared them away. <laughs> yeah. You scared them away. But maybe in time. <laughs> maybe in time. Let them go off and do their thing and they will come back. The doctor, the dentist, a good chance there. Um, I love this man. I could talk to him for ages and this is why I'm in the wine business because I feed off people like you. I just, my heart just starts pumping with excitement because all we're doing, as you'll see from the conversation, there's no, there's nothing complicated here and what I would love to teach everyone in the street, anyone can join this wine circle. You do not have to know an awful lot about wine to understand. You can smell, you can taste, you can talk, and that really is the secret of learning about wine. I just want to thank Oppie, thank you very much indeed. I know you're under a lot of pressure, Barbara, as the interpreter and as the export director. Thank you very, very much Thanks. indeed. Thank you. <laughs>